with us. We are dealing with Jezebel's last stand. Now, as Jehu approached, and as we approach this spirit, and as we deal with people who have this spirit, there is a couple of different things we have to keep in mind. There is a human aspect, and then there is a spirit aspect. In the human aspect, we are not against people. We stand against their actions. We have a clearly defined um, principles that we, that we live by. We create boundaries in our life so that people cannot continue to abuse us, but we love people. However, we hate the enemy. We stand against the evil. As David said in Psalms 118, excuse me, as David said in, in Psalms 18, I hate them with perfect hatred. What I pray is, God, help me to hate the things that you hate. Let me hate them the way that you hate them. And help me to love the things that you love and love the way that you love. And so when Jezebel was exposed and Jehu came to bring her down, he understood it was the evil that he was standing against. And in this case, because it was an earthly kingdom, he was dealing with a woman that had to be dealt with on a carnal and an earthly level. In the spiritual realm, we are bringing down a principality. We are bringing down a spiritual wickedness that is in high places, that is penetrated up into high levels. And we are bringing that spirit down. And what coincides afterwards is that people are released from that oppression. When Jezebel was confronted, number one, she was very well prepared. As I said earlier, she knew her history, A. B, she painted her face and arranged her hair. And C, she was very well informed. Her first line of attack shows the two aspects of her, of her style of, of governing and her style of manipulation. The first is always seduction. It's never accusation. It's never meanness. The first layer of Jezebel is always this soft, almost irresistible, magnetic, charismatic, uh, emotional, sensitive, intuitive person. That's the first thing. And then when it comes to the opposite sex, they will always seek to elicit some kind of a fleshly or carnal desire for them that will get you off base. Even if there is nothing that is done, if you feel the perversion or if you feel a lustful thought come through your mind, it will get you off base enough that you cannot proceed. It will stop you in your tracks. So the painting of the face is not just, is not just uh, being worldly. The painting of the face was to create an illusion. Face painting is making yourself what you really are not and making someone fall in love with an, an element of perfection that really doesn't exist. It's why the models are all airbrushed on the covers of the magazines. No one actually looks that good. If we realize what they did after the photo is taken, we would recognize that those women are probably uh, a whole lot less beautiful than what we think that they really are. But it creates an illusion, that illusion that the flesh is after. And so this is what she tries to do. She tries to seduce. Whenever she is confronted, the first thing she does is to try to make you question why you would ever want to destroy such a lovely thing as her. I know that when I see the spirit of Jezebel operate, I would see it operate in a person, and then I would go to talk to that person, and then I would go and test it in myself. And immediately, I would feel like, well, man, I, I must have totally missed this. Look at they're, they're a sweetheart. They're lovely. They're, there's something wrong with me. And then I go back and pray and say, God, I must just have a bad attitude. I must be judgmental. And, and God is saying, no, this is a seducing spirit that projects this image. It puts a face on for you. And we have to be aware of that when we're dealing with it. When under question, she can be very charming, letter A. Let her be, her painted face is more than vanity. It is a part of a cover. Number three, number one, she was well prepared. Number two, she tries to seduce. But in her last stand, when she has nothing left, then she accuses, accusations. This is the most powerful tool that Jezebel has. Letter A, accusation is a powerful form 
of manipulation. If I can get you to come down from your position of righteousness, then you do not have a motivation to continue to move forward. The Bible says the effectual, fer the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail much. If I can question your righteousness, your prayers will not avail. Accusation. Letter B, she tries to make you feel guilt for obeying God. When, when Jehu came and she, she could not en enamor him with her painted face and her braided hair and her uh, beautiful looks, the next thing she said was, had Zimri peace who slew his master, 2 Kings chapter number 9. She went straight to an accusation. She is accusing him of being like Zimri who overthrew his master. Now in actuality, Jezebel means le illegitimate power. She is not legitimate in any way. Nothing about her is legitimate. She's not a legitimate queen. She's not in surrender. She's not in submission. She doesn't really bear the king's name. She's not even a Jew. She's not even a believer in Jehovah. And yet, she's going to try to put herself in a position of being a judge. And she's also going to try to make you feel as if you are violating God's principles by even talking to her or even thinking about trying to overthrow her. Had Zimri peace who slew his master. She used the word on him. She tried to make him feel guilt for being obedient to what God told him to do. Let her see. She accused him of being the one who was undermining authority. What she is saying is, 